right, don't call it a comeback. Hip hop icon LL Cool J has been here for years. Soon you can see the two-time Grammy winner with The Roots, DJ, DJ Jazzy Jeff, and others on the Force Tour, which stands for Frequencies of Real Creative Energy. And uh, he will be making uh, local stops in Baltimore and D.C., but first, though, this morning, LL Cool J, a.k.a. James Todd, <laughs> I just like saying it, joins us to talk all about... Smith. Yeah. Hey. <laughs> Mr. Smith, <laughs> his tour, his music, and more. Good morning to Good you. Good morning. Good morning, good morning. How you doing? We're, we're doing great. So we want to talk about uh, this tour. Yeah. Uh, why did you decide to uh, to get back yeah. out there and, and start doing this this now? We know you're a legend. We know your your catalog is, is deep. But why decide? Why did you decide to get back out there and say, now's the time? The world needs some more LL Cool J. Well, you know what? Um, after doing the Grammys, I was inspired. And, uh, I, you know, I was infatuated with this idea of one continuous show. See, most of the time when you hear about these timeless hip-hop shows and you hear a, a lineup like this, you're thinking in your mind, okay, this person's going to perform and then this, and they'll leave and then this person will perform. And it's not like that. It's one continuous mixtape. It's like one continuous super group performing. And we're just going to, it's going to be crazy from beginning to end. Get your popcorn, come in, <laughs> get ready, and get, you know, and be prepared to go on a ride. You know what I'm saying? Because we're going on a ride for a few hours, and it's going to be crazy. You know, looking at that lineup, uh, that alone, I think, will sell some folks. Not much more you need to say. I'm, I'm curious, LL, I mean, you've been in the game for a minute. Hip-hop has come such a long way since you made your debut. I'm wondering, what to you has is, is going on in hip-hop that, that, hip that perhaps was surprising to you that you would have never predicted or expected? You know, that's a, that's a really beautiful question. I got to be honest with you. <laughs> Nothing has surprised me. Mm. Y you know why? Because I'm going to tell you why. Because it was always as big in my mind as it is now in the world. Mm. Like, when I was listening to... When I was listening to Spoonie G and I was listening to King Tim the Third and the Foursome Seas and the Cold Crush and even the Furious Five and the Treacherous Three and the Crash Crew, in my mind, it was already like global, huge, through the roof, triple mm -hmm. platinum. Like it was the biggest thing in the world to me as a little kid with pajamas with the feet yeah. in the bottom staring at my 12 inch vinyl. <laughs> so you know what I'm saying? So <laughs> none of this, this success doesn't really, that which would, the thing that would probably be the most, would have been the most surprising is the success overall. But yeah. to me, it was always this big. So it was just a matter of nothing. time. Yeah. Okay. Just a matter of time. Yeah. It was, you know what? It wasn't even a matter of time because in my mind it was already there. Wow. It was yeah. just a matter of it being revealed to the world. All right. Yeah. You um, know what I mean? I already saw it. Yeah. Real quick, real quick, my, uh, my next question is about your, your style. I mean, you came out and you had a specific style and it kind of catered to, to a di it, was, it was kind of a unique because it catered to a different group of people, women. The women loved you, all right? A lot of people were going hardcore and they were doing their own thing, but you were like, okay, this is my audience. I know at first it wasn't, but then eventually you got into the lane where all the ladies love Cool J. How did you know that that was going to be your path right. to, to success? I've come to realize that. Well, I didn't know that, but I know I loved them. And, it was, <laughs> and I hope they reciprocated, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> it wasn't really, it wasn't even that. Yo, I'm not even going to lie to you, it wasn't that calculated, bro. Yeah, I just yeah. like, I like girls. Let me make a song about girls. I like, think, you know? I think yeah. reciprocated might be the understatement of the right. century. <laughs> Listen, real quick, yeah. because I, you've, I like, I, people you know, feel like they like know girls. you so well, right? So I want to do a quick true and false rapid fire questions. Uh, you've said before that Bruce Lee and Okay. you to act true or false I can't really comment on that right okay. now because you know the strike and everything no no, no that's fine <laughs> yeah. you're nearly fluent in Spanish is that true or false yeah, well, I'm not, if I'm saying true in English, is it really true? <laughs> but okay. That, right, the, right, you know what I mean? But dad, but dad is truth. So, yeah, true. <laughs> you know I mean? Okay. The infamous lip licking is actually a nervous habit that you developed in your younger years. True or false? Yeah, I think that's pretty true. <laughs> okay. True. Okay, and then and the last one, you've written four books. True or false? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know how many books I've written. 
<laughs> well, see, there you go. Clearly, it's been multiple. I don't know. I, I did a lot of stuff. Yo, listen, I did a lot of stuff. You know what I mean? Like, I, I read my Wikipedia and find out stuff about oh, myself. No. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, yeah. That's how you know you're accomplished. There you yeah. go. All, All right. right. Thank you, LL Cool J. Appreciate it. I appreciate y'all. <laughs> October 15th, see you there. All right, you there heard you him. Go. There's the information on your screen. And, uh, of course, you can stay in touch with him, follow him on Twitter and uh, Facebook. All right. Well, after graduating with a master's in public health and teaching at Prince George's Community College,